Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. My name's Chris Coney and I am the host of the Cryptoverse and funnily enough I'm also the founder of Cryptoversity.com which is the online school where you set the price to learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. And you can find out more about Cryptoversity by going to cryptoversity.com or you can just google google cryptoversity and you'll find it anyway moving on to the markets this morning let's see what's going on here now you know i've been banging on about steam for the last few days because of its meteoric rise it shot up again yesterday <clears throat> and the overall market cap of steam is now 328 million dollars there is a dip according to coin market cap of 4.86% and that was due to a minor security breach, which I may talk about in a bit. Uh, long story short, about $85,000 worth of um, steam back dollars was stolen from people's accounts. This was specifically due to uh, a security flaw in the in the web app, which is the, you know, the website, which then connects to the blockchain and all the rest of it. So the blockchain itself is perfectly fine. The steam uh, token itself is perfectly fine insecure it was literally just the website which is you know the thing that unlocks people's wallets and whatnot um that a few accounts were compromised and about eighty five eighty five thousand dollars worth of steam was stolen and then ned scott uh, immediately put out a, a message saying there was a security problem and anyone who had lost funds in the breach would be compensated in full so that kind of a response was why it only dropped 4.8 percent and it's still sitting there because the fundamentals of steam remain solid. In other news, we've got uh, Ethereum and the Dow jumping up today. Last 24 hours, we've had Ethereum jump 12.43% and the Dow jump 17.7%. And that's because Ethereum has now formally decided to do a hard fork in order to, in order to reverse the damage done by the attack on the Dow. So basically, when the Ethereum network reaches the block number 1,920,000, that's the point where the hard fork will happen. Now this is due to happen sometime on Wednesday the 20th of July, and today is uh, Friday the 15th, so it's a few days away yet. The exact time is unknown because like, you know, you, you can't predict exactly when that block will be solved, um, but that will be the situation. Uh, a few, I've had emails from a few of the uh, exchanges that I use telling me that they're going to cease trading an hour before uh, cease trading on things like Ethereum <laughs> an hour before the hard fork and then they're going to wait for the new chain to be established before they resume okay because a hard fork literally is that it's like a fork in the road where you can go right or you can go left and for a short amount of time there's actually two blockchains two versions of the blockchain that exist and then the miners carry on mining and of course if most of the mining power is on one side of the fork that's the chain that grows and the other one doesn't uh, and then that becomes the dominant chain and then that becomes the official chain right but there's a, a bit of fluctuation in that time until the blockchain actually decides which is the longest one and which becomes the official one and then once that's become the official one then trading can resume and everything will be fine again so there we go <clears throat> that's probably the explanation for why ethereum and the dow are up today um anything else we've got here um Bitcoin's lost a bit of its dominance today due to that, given that Ethereum is a billion dollar coin again. Bitcoin's dominance has dropped to 80%, 80.6. However, the overall cryptoverse uh, of all coins adds up to about $13 billion, which is up a bit from yesterday. And I'm quite happy about that. Oh, Scenario up 11%. Keep your eye on Scenario. If you like the idea of Steam being a social network that pays you, then Scenario is the... Uh, the next in the queue for that we see this game credits is now in the top 20 this has been going up in double digits over the last few days and is up 33 percent today making the game credits blockchain worth 12 million dollars very very interesting um i had a look at game credits and it's sort of on par with peer plays not, not on par with it it's sort of trying to solve a similar problem um but it, i couldn't seem to sign up for i, I wanted to actually do use it but it doesn't seem to be launched yet even though the sales video sounds like it is i couldn't i could download the wallet but and trade the token but 
I couldn't actually get into a game and actually use it, which makes me assume that it's not actually launched yet. Right, moving on to Bitcoin Wisdom, take a look at the chart. Yep, still pretty pretty uh, steady going on the charts here. Um, according to Bitstamp, Bitcoin is $665. Uh, it, looking at this, the price, according to these two lines that I've drew, 657 at the top, 640 at the bottom, it slowly started to come out of that. Um, and the, the moving averages are still climbing upwards, so still officially an uptrend overall. Moving on to the news, courtesy of Bitcoin.com. In the featured articles today, we have popular TV shows are now mainstreaming cryptocurrency. Mainstreaming? Oh, oh uh, well, does that mean? I don't even know what that means. Uh, oh, and then the second featured article says Steam it hacked for $85,000 as users complain of weak security. Well, the thing is, the way you improve is by making mistakes. People who just don't have any philosophical awareness whatsoever will tend to have these knee-jerk reactions and expect perfection, right? And usually the less intelligent people are, the more they think in absolutes. And the more intelligent people are, the more they think in granularities, you know, in, in shades of, of gray rather than black and white. And then the most intelligent people don't just think in shades of gray, they think in full color. Um, and if you look at a rainbow, for example, there is no specific point where one color becomes another. The red sort of begins to become orange and then sort of becomes yellow. And But whereas there is no definitive point where one color becomes the next, they all blend into one. And that's how I describe people's ability to interpret uh, life, reality and concepts. If if you have low intelligence, you'll just tend to think in black and white terms. Does it fit into this category or that category? Whereas as you grow in awareness and intelligence, you tend to see that in between black and white is all the colors of the rainbow and none of them are actually self-contained. They're all, they all blend into each other. Anyway, so complaining of weak security, um, you know, the, the only way you find out if you've got a security problem is you do a security audit up front, of course, and I trust Ned and Dan to have done that. Um, but, there is no perfectly secure system, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So it very much depends on the nature of the security breach. Maybe we'll read that one. The third article says, uh, the inside scoop on Mark Capella's Japanese prison release. Uh, okay, that sounds interesting. Uh, next one is in the main news, China's constant bubbles drive investors to Bitcoin in droves. <laughs> yes, indeed. This is the thing. Bitcoin doesn't need a marketing team because the um, existing financial system is just the best advert ever for digital currencies ever, right? Because it becomes apparent how poor those systems are, right? And like I keep saying, up until now, there's been no alternative, and now there is. The next article reads, Spanish University holds a two-day Bitcoin and blockchain course. Well, that's spectacular. Nice to see. And then we've got Meet LenderBot, uh, Stratum and Deloitte's blockchain insurance bot. Very interesting. I hope that's peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, next article says, how too big to jail HSBC can still be vacated. Mm, that sounds interesting. Flipping next, a lot of news today. You really fell for it. Eurocoin disappears down the drain. Okay, not really interested in that. Four ways to buy weed legally with Bitcoin. Mm, I'm sure that will be popular. Uh, MIT's Riffle claims to be more anonymous than Tor. And is Japan becoming the new Bitcoin trading superpower? Right, let's do the thing. I should have done this before I started recording, but let's see which one's the most popular featured article today. Yeah. Oh, the mainstream one, the one about popular TV shows are now mainstream cryptocurrency. It's only been read 478 times so far. I mean, that could be because it's only just been published. Steam hacked for $85,000. Um, that one's got... 1,904 views, and then this one about Mark Capellas, th nearly 3,000, so maybe we'll read that one. I, I suppose, I mean, I, I assume, and I uh, use my own judgment on this, but I think the cryptocurrency community will be interested in someone who, um, someone being released from prison. Isn't this the Mount Gox guy? I think this is him, but we'll see. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember everyone's specific name, but I think this is the guy. So the, the headline is, the inside scoop on Mark Capellas' Japanese prison release. And this was an article from the 14th of July, which was yesterday. 
Uh, let's see what we've got then. Japanese news reports that Mark Capellas, the infamous CEO of Mt. Gox, was released on bail yesterday. The video from News24 Japan says Capellas was left uh, was let out after being in prison for a year and he was released on a bail of one hundred thousand dollars. Excuse the irony, but I wonder if they take that in Bitcoin. So the next heading reads, Mark Capella is post bail and weighs a lot less. What do you mean he weighs a lot less in terms of he's got empty pockets or because he's lost weight? <laughs> so Mark Capella was arrested last year by Japanese authorities for being involved with the Mount Gox, Gox fiasco. I don't think he was just involved, he was the CEO, right? Losing roughly 700,000 Bitcoins. Now guys, just to let you know, at today's prices, 700,000 Bitcoins is 458 million dollars. So that's a lot. I mean, that kind of looks makes the Dow attack look uh, small potatoes, doesn't it? Anyway, prote- prosecutors are accusing Capellas of embezzling 4.3 million dollars after his company filed for bankruptcy. Capellas has been arrested two times so far for moving money. Well, it says there for 3.4 million dollars. That might have been what 700,000 bitcoins was worth at the at the time. But today's price is it's 458 million dollars which is a huge amount of money <laughs> and then inset into the article is a photo which looks like uh i think it's from news 24's website as a video and it's got japanese writing all over it it's even got a japanese share share a japanese twitter share button which i quite like anyway in just a side note i think that's one of the things that appeals about japanese culture is that the very fact that they have a different alphabet that kind of makes it um, more mystical and interesting than Italian, which is essentially the Roman um, alphabet, right? So anyway, that's just a side note from some random part of my mind. All right, moving on. In October of 2015, he was arrested in Tokyo for moving $1 million worth of yen to his personal bank account. Those same reports rumored that Capelles was running around with prostitutes during his previous release. Since then, Capellas was held in jail for over a year, and his recent release, the rules say that he is not allowed to leave Japan. That's funny. Roger Veer has fled to well, fled. He's not fled. He's not fled at all. Roger Veer has moved to Japan um, from the United States, and uh, Capellas, I don't know what his living situation was, but that's interesting that he has to stay there. So our source from Japan says, since the investigation, Capellas was waiting on on, go, on going to trial. Many former Mt. Gox employees were interviewed by police about the loss of millions of Bitcoin. Many believed the investigation was closed, but due to recent interviews, the case may have to be reopened. More information from our Japanese sources says that since the government classification of Bitcoin was changed, Officials might have to start the case over from scratch. Our sources also say while Capella spent time in jail, he lost 35 kilograms in weight and is looking quite thinner these days. Well, just a side note on that. When CEOs become very rich and successful, they get called fat cats, don't they? <laughs> because in the, I guess back in the day, to be fat was considered a sign of wealth, I guess. But I'm just saying, now this guy has lost all of his money. Um, he's got skinny. One odd thing to note is the fact that waiting a whole year for a trial is pretty rare in Japan, with the country holding a 99.99% conviction rate. Ouch. This might be due to the troubles associated with tracking Bitcoin, as Japanese police want to be absolutely sure before convicting Capellas. Another rumor from our Japanese sources, well, that's not a, that's not information, a rumor from Japanese sources, tells us that the French embassy has been complaining about Capellas' long wait time for a trial, leaving French authorities wondering what is going on with the investigation. Ah, I guess, I didn't know this, I guess Capellas is a French citizen. Alongside this rumor, it has been said that the Japanese police have also tried to get Capellas to sign a, se- a statement saying that he was Satoshi Nakamoto. What? That's ridiculous. In my mind, that's ridiculous. I do not think for one second this guy matches my vision 
or my perception of what what who Satoshi Nakamoto is was. These specifics are unconfirmed, but it's very common in Japan for people to be asked to sign statements such as these with the conviction rate so high. Huh. Well, that might be how you get a 99.99% conviction rate. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you manage to convict 99.9% of the actual perpetrators. It just means that the case is technically closed, pinning it on somebody, right? So you've got to be careful there. The video from News24 Japan shows a very skinny Mark Capellis, who looks very different. So he may get away with being unnoticed in the region for the time being. Bitcoin.com will be monitoring the situation firsthand as we have reporters and employees living in Japan. We will keep our readers up to date on anything that arises from this story. What do you think about Mark Capella's release on bail? Let us know in the comments below. I think I've already said that there is no comments. There is no comments. So he's on bail. It's taken a while, isn't it? It is taking a while. Um, so it says on October. Well, geez, things move so fast in the cryptoverse. I can't believe it's it's not even been a year since he was arrested. Jeez, it seems like a lot longer ago than that. And generally, if I say it seems a lot longer ago than that, it's because so much happens in a short space of time. It's usually the amount that happens, the amount of activity that happens that makes it feel like a lot of time has passed, right? Whereas if you do the same thing day in and day out, that tends to make the time uh, go slower, right? <clears throat> Or it seemed like longer time has passed. Anyway, so what I'm getting at is that it's only been October of last year when he was arrested. And I remember reading on the news at the time, and it seems a lot longer ago than flipping whatever it is, seven or eight months. Yeah, it's very interesting. So now he's awaiting trial. So he, I guess he's paid his $100,000 bail. He must have. Because it's, this article says that he was released on $100,000 bail. So... um. The, the irony that I pointed out was, how do we know he didn't use some of the stolen funds, allegedly stolen funds, beg your pardon, you, ha you, can't, <laughs> you can't say stolen funds until you've been convicted, because that's not legally correct. So ele the alleged stolen funds, did he use some of the alleged stolen funds to fund his bail? That would be ironic, to say the least. Anyway, that's going to do it for this edition of The Cryptoverse with me, Chris Coney. I'd like to thank you for listening today. As always, you can go to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and then scroll down to the bottom if you wish to subscribe on iTunes or on Stitcher or on the Google Play Store or on YouTube. I'm thinking where else I can syndicate the Cryptoverse. If you've got any ideas, let me know. Uh, my Twitter handle actually is uh, at Chris Coney INT, which stands for international. Uh, at the bottom of that page, you can also, sorry, at the bottom of the page, cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast you can contribute to the cryptoverse using the qr code and the bitcoin address on there alternatively if you want to support the cryptoverse financially without spending any money check it out on steemit and then you can upvote the episodes and that will help fund the cryptoverse without costing you a penny um, and that's that's actually a link i need to put on the podcast page so the fifth one on the page there after YouTube, I'll put the Steam It one on there. And remember to check out the main site, cryptoversity.com, crypto which is the online school where you set the price to learn about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. Remember that the latest course has just gone live, which is called How to Get Paid to Search the Web. Learn how to earn some Bitcoin every time you use a search engine. No, that's not a joke. You can go to the course page, watch the promo video, and it'll explain exactly how that happens. All right, that's all for today, guys. It's me, Chris Coney, signing off and saying bye for now.